Welcome everyone to EFT tapping for the week of October 14th. Thank you, thank you for joining me here today and for more importantly, committed to your continuing uh, path of healing, path of growth. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunny day here in Massachusetts and I keep getting the message to encourage people to get outside. I just finished recording a, a video for a membership and that came through really strongly, um, just the importance of needing to be outside right now, uh, connecting with Mother Earth. Also want to thank those of you who responded to the poll on the Angels Alchemy and Human Design Group. Um, your input is really, really helpful. So I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. And because of that, we are actually going to be starting with um, the topic that seemed to have the most traction um, and, and my angel said this is also a good place to start and that is around grief and sadness and depression. Um, which it's interesting because I had thrown out a number of different options on the poll and I will be going back to that poll and focusing on other things in the weeks to come. And of course, um, as things change for you, please, you know, that poll is going to be a, a living, breathing um, feedback loop for me. So keep using it as you feel inspired to. Um, it was interesting to me that anxiety around the election actually didn't come up as a top priority and even COVID was there, but not really strongly. So, um, and, and there was an option that I put in around um, feeling this disconnection, lack of faith in, in God and the angels. And that also didn't come up as a high priority. So um, I thought that was actually a really um, positive thing that the people are feeling this, um, element of connection, even if it can feel clouded at some times. So I'm going to start with the card for today. Um, and just reminding you guys that this, I'm going to be doing this weekly at this time um, for the foreseeable future. I'm not sure how long it will go, um, but certainly as long as there seems to be a need and energy for it. So the card is another one of my new decks. That's what happens when you lock a witch at home. Uh, Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacy DeMarco. And I have to say, when I first was looking through this deck, I was like, mm, it's okay, but I've actually really grown to love it. And it's really given me some, some lovely insights in my morning meditations. And the card that came forward for today is the uh, Waxing Crescent Moon, number seven, number actually... Um, it's the fifth iteration of the waxing crescent in its nourishment. And what I take from this is the literal nourishment, really making sure that you're feeding yourself well, body, mind, and spirit, so that the foods that you're eating are really clean. Um, I think especially as we head into the colder weather here in the Northern Hemisphere, that there can be this tendency to um, change our eating habits, change our eating behaviors. Um, and not, I know I have, I have had a tendency and have to wash myself with this. Um, you know, like if I'm hungry and go to the grocery store and I want cookies, I'll come home with three boxes of cookies. Um, so just strategizing around ways to keep what's in your house and what you're putting in your mouth on the healthier side of things, I think is really important right now. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to have a cookie here and there, of course. Um, but, you know, just making sure that the trend is positive. The other part of it, and I'm getting this so loud and clear, is make sure that you're nourishing yourself spiritually, emotionally. The news is so chaotic right now and so crazy, and especially on the topic of sadness, grief, and depression, there's a lot in the news that can throw us. And we have to be very discerning with how we're feeding ourselves emotionally and spiritually. Um, doesn't mean that you live with your head in the sand, but, you know, make sure that you're really protecting yourself and that you're nourishing yourself with uh, influences that are uplifting and supportive. Really, really important right now. All right, so let's get to the tapping. And if you are on here on live, feel free to jump in on the chat if something comes up or if you have any questions. All right, so I wrote these down. Um, as a more of a channel starting point um, earlier this morning. 
and some of it feels a little bit random, but you know, like everything, I, I do trust what my angels are telling me uh, where to focus. So, all right. I invite you to just settle into your body with the intention of releasing everything that is ready to be released. Making space for everything that is ready to come to you. All that goodness that is your birthright. And tapping on the outside of the hand, please either repeat after me or just listen and absorb. However it works best for you is perfect. Even though everything about life is making me sad right now. And a part of me feels depressed most of the time. I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Even though a part of me is feeling so deeply sad right now, that I don't even know how to manage life. And to show up with a smile on my face. I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Even though a part of me feels depressed most of the time, And this doesn't feel like the true me. It feels like I'm being suffocated. I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Tapping the inside of the eyes, feeling suffocated. Feeling depressed. feeling suffocated. I have such sadness. I feel like I'm picking it up from everywhere and everyone. There is so much sadness right now. And I feel like a sponge. soaking it up. And that makes me feel suffocated because I don't know what to do. I don't feel like it's all mine. Maybe none of it is mine. But I need to let it go. because I'm feeling suffocated. And I know this is not in my highest good. So I'm open to the story the sadness has to tell. Whatever that story may be. I am listening. I am open. I am curious and I have faith. I have faith. I have faith. Top of the head because I deeply and I completely love, forgive, and accept myself.
So just allow yourself to shift, allow the healing reaction that you may be having body, mind, and spirit. And if there is anything you feel you need to want to share, please do. And we're going to go into our second round here. All right, being shared the first sentence, I felt my aura shrink way down into me and dark, which was the sentence about being sad and depressed. I can look at my notes. I will look at my notes. And for those of you, if you're trying to join, if you're joining in from Facebook, um, I was not able to um, stream today. Even though technology does not always work for me. Um, all right, down into dark sadness. Okay. And did that shift for you? What, what subsequently um, during the tapping seemed to move the energy? Because that's what we're really... So, so this is coming up and this is really interesting. Um, the message I'm getting from the angels right now is sometimes we can shift and we can move things from one part of us to another part of us. And there's a subconscious desire to hold on to that. And we did a little bit of this actually in the nine day tapping last week where part of us um, didn't want to let go because it's familiar, because it's comfortable those energies, even if they're not, um, you know, in our highest good, there's a part of us that wants to hold on. But the image that I got with that sadness for you is, um, sorry about that, is that the sadness is um, something that might have moved from, from one part of you to another. So it's really important to have that intention of releasing, 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 like really letting go, not moving it to another part of your being. So I hope that makes sense. And got better when I said, open to release, fear popped up, a serious fear of maybe why we're here in this time. Yeah, it's a very pivotal time for sure. So I understand that there can be um, sort of anxiety around that for sure. All right. So let's move on to our second, and I have the wrong notes. I'm doing a mediumship circle later, so I have those are the notes that are in front of me. That's not going to help. All right. I think this is actually going to help with um, what we were just talking about, the second setup. This was really interesting. Um, came in from the angels this morning, so I, I, I suspect I'll be interested in how you guys react to this one. I should say respond, not react. All right. Tapping on the outside of the hand. Even though this grief feels like it's running through my veins and has been there for lifetimes. I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Even though I feel like this grief and this sadness feels so familiar to me because it's been part of my soul for lifetimes. I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Even though a part of me doesn't want to let go, because this grief and this sadness has been with me for lifetimes. 
and it's familiar. And I'm scared of what might come in to replace it. I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Tapping the inside of this eye, the eyes. This fear has been with me for lifetimes. This grief has been with me for lifetimes. Lifetimes of oppression. Lifetimes of abuse. Lifetimes of loss. Lifetimes of loss. And yet it feels so familiar that part of me doesn't want to let it go. It feels like such a part of me. And yet I know it no longer serves. I have learned what I've needed to learn. And I am here to help this planet and humanity transform. And because of that, I raise my vibration. And I release once and for all. This depression that has been with me for lifetimes. This grief that has been with me for lifetimes. Top of the head, because I deeply and I completely love, forgive, and accept myself. And I just want to say that that felt, um, there's more, there's more, but I was guided to bring it to a stopping point there. So um, that really spoke to me about lifetimes. Yeah, right. That could be like a whole thing, tapping on past life stuff, things that our souls have been carrying with us. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just getting my instructions. All right. Okay. So, um, back to my notes here, first round, tightness in between my heart and my throat almost froze me, then it didn't want my hand to move, got better after the release, good, good, good. Okay. So, I have my, my marching orders here, so let's, let's do our third, third round here, and then I have a lovely affirmation. <clears throat> Even though a part of me is terrified because I feel like I'm running out of time. And I don't know what the future holds. And what if I can't really let go? I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Even though a part of me is terrified, because I feel like I'm running out of time, And I can still feel the grief and the sadness and the depression. So I'm scared that it's not really releasing. 
I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Tapping the inside of the eyes, I feel like there's a battle inside of me. The part that wants to release and the part that's holding on. But the part that wants to release is stronger. And I know that I'm not running out of time. Even though I still feel like I am. Because a stronger part of me is present right now. From tapping into my other lifetimes. Giving me the perspective that my soul is eternal. And that as I release now, I release for all time. And so I ask the angels, my higher self, to make this release complete for today. Top of the head, because I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. And I'm gonna go right into the affirmation and then I'll check in with you guys. Taking a nice deep breath in and just really allowing that release, creating the space for it to be complete for you today. Tapping on the outside of the hand, I love me. I choose to release all the sadness, grief, and depression that is ready to go right now. I know better now than I ever have before. I can do this. I am gentle with myself. I forgive and I move on top of the head, releasing all that no longer serves me. Right here, right now. Because I deeply and I completely love, forgive, and accept myself. So I want to just, before we wrap up here, bring attention. These dump trucks are going by, which feels, of course, significant, um, hauling away the stuff. I want to bring attention as we wrap up here to those words. We talk a lot, spend a lot of energy on what it is that we're looking to release, you know, the grief, the sadness, the, the depression. and. What I really want to leave you all with here today is the I love, I forgive, I accept myself deeply and completely. You know, in our membership today, there was a message from our beautiful, beloved Barb. I don't think she'd mind my sharing Barb Andrew, Barbara Andrew. And it was a video message about, you know, coping with all that's going on. And uh, there was more to it than that. But what I want to get to today, which I have found personally to be really huge, is this idea of bowing to these feelings, these energies that um, sting us. 
you know, so if it's lack of clarity, bowing to that lack of clarity. And I forget where this came from. She brought it from someplace else and I forget where that was, but um, it's really, really a powerful thing. So if you're feeling stuck, bowing to that stuckness, because all these energies are teachers, they're teachers. And the more that we can honor them as such, the more that we're able to loosen the grip that they have on the lower self. So with that, so much love to each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you for joining me here today, whether live or by recording, and hopefully we'll figure out that Facebook Live thing for next week. But I will be back here next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. So much love, be well, you're welcome, bye.